My question deals with the point of using Madison Avenue tactics to run what? Madison Avenue tactics. Yes. To ram programs through people's throats. Surely, Dr. Friedman, those who claim no knowledge of economics, and indeed many economists too, listen to you. Why do they listen? Well, because there is faith in your knowledge and ability to analyze economic problems and launch an acad academic campaign. Suppose in the future, God forbid, you are found to be wrong. Surely, Dr. Friedman, does not the fault lay in our faith than in the decision makers? Does not the myth then grow out of the faith, the same faith we used to believe in you now? Yes, it does. But there's a big difference, quite a difference. See, I don't have anything, I don't have any objection to Madison Avenue tactics. I think advertising serves a very useful function so long as it's competitive. I think it's fine for me to be able to talk to you as long as other people can talk to you and you can hear other views and you can make up your mind. The thing I object to about government use of Madison Avenue tactics is that it is unrestrained and it isn't, doesn't have effective competition and that it is financed, not voluntarily, not by the people who buy the product, that you and I have to pay taxes to hire people to persuade us to pay still more taxes. That's the feature of it that I object to. I have no objection to individuals in their private capacity getting up on platforms as I'm getting up on this one to try to persuade people in one view or another. But should the people you and I pay with taxes be in that position? Should we have employees of the Social Security Board sending around propaganda for extending Social Security? Is that an appropriate use of governmental money? I don't think so. And that's what I object to. It is not. But aren't the people supposed to be intelligent enough to know deceit from truth? No. <laughs> Very good. They are supposed then to be intelligent. Excuse me. They are supposed to be intelligent enough to choose among alternative purveyors of supposed truth. The problem is a one-sidedness. We believe the whole justification for free press, for free speech, for our whole system of adversary justice, the whole justification is that people will be best able to distinguish truth from falsity if they have an opportunity to hear a variety of different opinions. Now, if you only have one opinion spoken, to shift grounds. If we go to the Soviet Union, the people in the Soviet Union are enormously skeptical about what they hear from their government. But they cannot know the truth because they don't hear it. They have to conjecture what is the truth because they only hear one side. They don't believe that. Don't misunderstand me. They become experts at reading between the lines. But they still don't have access to the full variety of opinion which would enable them to choose and decide intelligently and reasonably about what's right. So let's by all means have a clash of opinion. Let different beliefs clash in the marketplace of ideas. But let's not have a monopoly or a subsidization of one brand of ideas versus another.